The Maiden Wiser Than the Tsar Once upon a time there was a poor man who had one daughter. Now this girl was amazingly wise, seemed to have knowledge far beyond her years, and often said things which surprised her own father. One day, being without a penny, the poor man went to the Tsar to beg. The Tsar, astonished at the man's cultivated way of saying things, asked him where he has learned such phrases. From my daughter, he replied. But where was your daughter taught? asked the Tsar. God and our poverty have made her wise, was the answer. Here is some money for your immediate needs, said the Tsar, and here are thirty eggs. Command your daughter in my name to hatch them for me. If she does this successfully, you shall have rich presents, but if she does not, you will be put to the torture. The man went home and took the eggs to his daughter. She examined them and weighed one or two in her hands. Then she realized that they were hard-boiled. So, she said, Father, wait until tomorrow. Maybe I can think what can be done about this. Next day, she was up early, having thought of a solution, and boiled some beans. She gave her father a small bag of the beans and said, Go with the plow and oxen, father, and start plowing beside the road where the Tsar will pass on his way to church. When he puts his head out of the carriage window, call out, Go on, good oxen, plow the land so that these boiled beans will grow well. The father did as she told him, and sure enough, the Tsar put his head out of the window of his carriage to watch the man at work, and, hearing what was being shouted, said, Stupid fellow, how can you expect boiled beans to produce anything? Primed by his daughter, the simple man called out, Just as from boiled eggs, chickens can be produced. So laughing, the Tsar went on his way, knowing that the girl had outwitted him. But it was not to end there. The next day, the Tsar sent a courtier to the poor man with a bundle of flax, saying, This flax must be made into sails for my ship by tomorrow, otherwise you will be executed. Weeping, the man went home, but his daughter said, Have no fear, I shall think of something. In the morning, she came to him and gave him a small block of wood and said, Tell the Tsar that if he can have all the tools necessary for spinning and weaving made out of this piece of wood, I will do the material for his sails out of the bunch of flax. He did so, and the Tsar was further impressed by the girl's answer. But he put a small glass into the man's hand and said, Go, take this to your daughter and ask her to empty the sea with this, so that I may enlarge my dominions with precious new pastures. The man went home and gave his daughter the glass, telling her that the ruler had demanded yet another impossibility. Go to bed, she said. I will think of something by bringing my mind to bear upon it all night. In the morning, she said, Go to the Tsar and tell him that if he can dam up all the rivers of the world with this bundle of tow, then I will empty the sea for him. The father went back to the Tsar and told him what his daughter had said. The Tsar, seeing that she was wiser than himself, asked that she be brought to court forthwith. When she appeared, he asked her, What is it that can be heard at the greatest distance? Without any hesitation, she replied at once, The thunder and the lie can be heard at the greatest distance, O Tsar. Astonished, the Tsar grasped his beard, and then, turning to his courtiers, asked, What is my beard worth, do you think? Each of them began to say what they thought the Tsar's beard was worth, making the value higher and higher, hoping to curry favor with his majesty. Then he said to the maiden, And what do you think my beard is worth, my child? Everyone looked on in amazement as she replied, Your Majesty's beard is worth every bit as much as three summer rains. The Tsar, greatly astonished, said, You have guessed rightly. I shall marry you and make you my wife this very day. So the girl became the Tsarina. But just when the wedding was over, she said to the Tsar, I have one request to make. Be graciously pleased to write with your own hand that if you or anyone in your court be displeased with me, and I had to go away, I should be allowed to take with me any one thing which I liked best. Enamored of the beautiful maiden, the Tsar asked for pen and parchment, and at once wrote, sealing the document with his own ruby ring, as she had requested. The years passed most happily for both of them, and one day the Tsar had a heated argument with the Tsarina and said, Go! I desire that you leave this palace never to return. 
I shall go tomorrow then, said the young Tsarina dutifully. Only allow me one more night here to prepare myself for the journey home. The Tsar agreed, and she gave him his bedtime herbal drink with her usual care. No sooner had the Tsar drunk the potion than he fell asleep. The Tsarina had the Tsar carried to a coach, and they went to her father's cottage. When the morning came, the Tsar, who had spent a tranquil night, woke and looked around him in amazement. Treason, he roared. Where am I and whose prisoner? Mine, your majesty, said the Tsarina sweetly. Your parchment written with your own hand is here. And she showed him where he had written that if she had to leave the palace, she could take with her that which she liked best. Hearing this, the Tsar laughed heartily and declared that his affection for her had returned. My great love for you, O Tsar, said she, has made me do this bold thing, but I risk death to do it so you must see that my love is indeed very great. Then they were united and lived happily together for the rest of their lives.